This is Ron Palou with NetSmart Technology, and I welcome you to Airs, the Airs Data Extracts. What are the Airs Data Extracts? The Airs Data Extracts are tables and files which can be created from Airs and imported into spreadsheets and other database applications. Many agencies use the Airs Data Extracts for custom queries of their data. Uh, including internal reporting objectives, data cleanup, and analysis. This online video tutorial will review creating the errors data extracts and give some examples of how the files can be used. Let's get started. To access the errors data extracts, we would come up to the uh, top menu, come into extracts, and then the second item down, which is the errors data extracts. On this description page, we have a listing of the different tables and files we can create as a part of the Airs Data Extracts. Please note the many different areas of Airs Data the Airs Data Extracts includes. Once we select the Airs Data Extracts, we can see that we have two different tabs appear at the top, both the Selection tab and the Output tab. Here on the selection tab, we can select the client status type. We could choose status type of active only or closed only. Additionally, you'll see down here at the bottom, the errors data extracts can be run based on an as of date. If we navigate over to the output tab, here we can see the three different reporting options for the errors data extracts. We have the errors data extract structure, client listing and create errors data extracts, and create errors data extracts and information page. The errors data extract structure will give the user a detailed listing of all the fields that are included in the data extract files. The field name, type, length, and field description are all listed. Prior to running the other two data extract options, users may find it helpful to run and print this as a reference. Looking here at URS data, we can see some of the fields included, client ID, the internal errors ID for individuals, last underscore name, client's last name, first underscore name, client's first name. We have various race and ethnicity codes. Scrolling down, we can also see sex at birth, current gender identity, date of birth, age, When first reviewing the data extract files, many users find URS data to be a good starting point. It should be noted, running the errors data extract structure file does not create the errors data extract files themselves. For that, we'd want to go to the two other reporting options, client listing and create errors data extracts, and create errors data extracts and information page. Client listing and create errors data extracts. Aside from creating the errors data extracts, this option will give users a listing of clients that are included in the data extracts, including their client ID, date of birth, case status, program, and the current assigned worker. Upon clicking proceed, we are brought to this screen, which allows us to select our tables. As a part of this option, you will see that URS data, which includes client demographic data, is already checked off, as well as URS prog that includes client program enrollment history. Uh, if there are other tables that we would like to generate, we can simply check those off. Additionally, we have the option up here at the top to both select all or unselect all. Down here towards the bottom, 
We have a start and end date if we were checking off URS serve, which includes client encounter and service data. We can choose a start date for encounters and services. Here we can see the destination for our file. So they'll be created to this uh, destination, which we could always change to another destination on our network. And then we have these different output formats, including DBF, XML, and CSV. We can check off the output format desired. And then we also have this checkbox, save table and output format selection made during this session for future use. So once we have selected our tables, selected our output format, we can click begin down here at the bottom. And we get this message, there are files in the destination folder. All files in the destination folder will be deleted and replaced with the ones selected. So if you do have files in that folder that you want to retain, make sure to move them out before running the extracts. We can click OK. And here we have the errors data extract client listing knowing that the errors data extract have completed. At your agency, this could take a few minutes to complete. So from here, we can then obtain the data extract files we created. Going into the extracts folder of our errors directory, which is the default creation folder, we can see CSV output option, which was the one that we had selected. And here we have the different files, URS data, URS housing, URS labs, URS prog, and URS serve. The third reporting option, create errors data extracts and information page, follows the same process. We click proceed, it brings us to our data extract selection screen. Down at the bottom, click begin. Again, we'll get that warning message related to the files being deleted and replaced with the ones selected in the destination folder. Rather than receiving that client listing, here we have the errors data extract completion report. So once you see that this report is on the screen, then you know that the data extract files are now in the destination folder and ready for use. Using the errors data extracts. Once the errors data extract files have been created, we can analyze and manipulate them for a variety of purposes. Here you can see the CSV folder found within the extracts folder of the errors directory showing all the uh, CSV files that I created on my last errors data extract run. So say we want to take a look at URS data. And here we have the URS data opened in the CSV format. Uh, URS data includes a client demographic information, a lot of the information that's collected as a part of the agency intake. We can see last name, first name, uh, the different race and ethnicity codes are included in URS data. If we scroll over, we can then see uh, primary language. Further, we can then see uh, fields such as gender, sexual orientation, date of birth, age, all of these are included as a part of URS data. So from here, let's say we wanted to group our clients by primary language. We could choose the sort. Select primary language from our sort by column. Click OK. And here we can see now all of our clients are 
sorted by primary language. Here we have URS housing, which includes client housing status information. Say we wanted to sort by housing status. We could come in, choose sort by housing, click OK. And here you can see the table is now sorted based on the client's housing status. So we could uh, run a query, how many clients have homeless on street as their status, how many clients have residential group home, how many clients have residential drug treatments, and see right down the list. Maybe we're looking to see which clients need to have their sexual orientation values updated. We could do a sort by sexual orientation. Scroll over in the list. And here we can see those clients that have sexual orientation information answered. And those that show blanks in the column, these of course would be those clients that need to have their information updated. Thank you for joining us for this online video tutorial on the AIRS data extracts. Please visit www.airsny.org to view our full online video tutorial library.